Lounge and Sun. Oh, cool. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. And- we have another episode of Thought Balloon. I have Jen back with me, and today we're going to be talking about comics, journalism, books based on true events, stuff like that. And this was Jen's idea, so Jen is going to be taking the lead on this episode. That way I don't sound stupid in the beginning of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Um, so this idea basically comes from the fact that I finished reading two amazing comic books, like so Mouse, which is a an incredible classic, Mm -hmm. and a book called Welcome to the New World um, that's written by Jake Halpern and Michael Sloan. So it's a new book, and both of them won a Pulitzer Prize. So Pulitzer Prize is basically, it's a prize that's uh, given for journalism, um, articles, magazines, stuff like that. And it's really interesting for me that two comic books won that, well, two of them won um, a Pulitzer Prize because it's so different than what you can see. What's really interesting for me is that Welcome to the New World is based on what it was originally published as comic strips in the New York Times. And it's the, it's the story of uh, a Syrian family who comes to the States in 2016. And basically it's their story from the war to America and how they and how they learned to live in another country and how they adapted um, to this new culture that they, um, in America, basically. And I really think that comic, these two are, well, especially Welcome to the New World is considered co- comic journalism. Mm-hmm. So it's basically when journalists transform their articles or their documentary or stuff like that into comic books. And I thought it was really interesting because reach to a different audience but also a way to connect a little bit better with the story especially like welcome to the new world it's a syrian family that literally escaped war so sometimes when you read the words you get something but when you actually see characters that look like human being and they are based on through people interact with this this these really shattering events life shattering events it's it brings you something else. It, it's like, for me, it connects more to my heart, you know, because I can actually see, and it's like a different way to carry emotion. And it's a different way to also carry information because it. I think with this type of comic books, we can reach a different audience. And that's something that can we, we can link maybe with the growing readership top balloon that we did a couple of weeks ago, because it's another way to inform people to reach a more mature audience to carry information and to just like share stories that are based on true facts like Mouse, which is for me one of the best comic book ever written. When I read that, I was like, I will never read a comic book this good in my life. It's the best thing in the world. It's so good. It's so amazing on so many levels, but it's so heavy, you know, because it's basically it's, it's about all costs. It's a it's the the Art Spiegelman, who's the writer, his, his, it's the story of his father who survived Auschwitz. And it's so heavy, but it's so good to see this point of view of an actual survivor telling his story through comic books. And it's not, there's no romance. It's not, there's no details of like, you know, added details of stuff that didn't happen or like thing that we think might have happened. It's like true facts told in comic books. And that's something really fascinating for me. And yeah. yeah, so yeah, I think that's for me, comic journalism is just a different way to reach a different audience. That's really benefit for the comic world and the comic industry. And I wish I could read more. Now I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that is a very interesting ap- approach for people to do instead of like writing an article for a newspaper, especially because like, I, I don't want to say newspapers are dying, but I mean, you can go online and read an article, right? And yeah. I think there was a certain, it's like reading comics digitally or in print, right? (laughs) Reading an an article on the internet or reading an article in the newspaper also feels very different because I used to read, I would read articles in the paper when I was younger or, um, you know, even when I was in like rehab and stuff, you know, like we would have, I'd read the sports section and I'd read some of the other articles because there's not much to do when you're locked down there, you know? 
But yeah, to, to be able to absorb information through the medium of comic books is is very fascinating. And I think it does add a certain level of you're filtering out the bullshit of like what you would maybe also see on the news, right? Like, I don't watch the news because I feel like 90% of it is just bullshit or they're telling us stuff we want to hear or what they think what they want to tell us without giving us the whole story right but with a comic book you're you're being able to tell your story and it's it's just that it's you're just solely focused on that story i think like mouse is is a very good example i think it was also very interesting that he chose to make the jewish people mice and the nazis cats it's you know? so smart it's so yeah, brilliant on so is. many level it is it's brilliant and you know i had I never met her, but I had a family member that escaped from a concentration camp, you know? So, like, that point in history has always kind of resonated with me. So, I think that that's why Mouse has an extra weight to it when I when I read it, you know? And, and like, other stories, you know, it, it is crazy to think, like, a comic book winning a Pulitzer. But at the same time, it's not that crazy because what we're seeing in the comic book industry from the time Mouse came out to now is such a such a crazy growth and expansion of different ideas coming into the industry you know i mean those books that you were mentioning earlier besides mouse like i, I want to check them out now and you know other stuff like based on factual events like i i um i recently interviewed hoche anderson so i posted it a little while ago right mm -hmm. and he wrote a book called king it's about Martin Luther King Jr. The amount of research that, I mean, without asking him, he told me he did a lot of research, but even without asking him, just the amount of research that he did could have easily been a novel. You know what I mean? It could have just been a, um, a retrospective on on the man for like the newspaper, like maybe to publish on his birthday, anything, right? But it was so powerful, like the imagery to accompany the words gives it that extra you know, that extra punch that you mm -hmm. can't get. You can still get a power. You can read a powerful all article, like you said, but it's the having imagery to accompany it uh, makes it that it's much a different more special. way to connect. Right. And it's a different way to to connect emotionally because comic books, people don't I don't feel like I'm going to tell outsiders books. So people who don't read comic books, I feel like sometimes they don't grasp really the effect of comic books because you have the writing and you have the art so it's like hitting you in both ways it's hitting you visually and it's hitting you with the words right so technically yeah. like if you read it out loud like um you can hear the words right so it's hitting you on both ways so it's like when reading comic books that tells a powerful true story or story based on true events you're literally hitting two spots so you're hit literally hitting your eyes and your ears about something so powerful and for me it just affects me so much more and it's like i said it's just a different way to connect to the story and to the people after that i just i just want to research more you know i just want to learn more about the subject and it's for me as a reader it's easier to read a comic book than read an article because a comic book it's lighter right <laughs> yeah and i mean i get it for me, for me, it's easier to read a comic book than an article. Just because sitting and like reading words, it's like sometimes when I'm tired, it's like okay, like, I like the words can confuse and stuff like that. So comic books is just easier to read and it's faster and it's just the best way for me to learn new stuff. And I I'm always so happy information through comic books. Yeah. Because it's the only thing I read and it's so fun and it's so interesting to learn historical things via comic books and that's something that i really adore if i would just want to also mention another comic book that's called paying the land by joe sacco and i haven't read it yet but it's the story of native americans and their relationship to the land and how it got transformed through the years the impact of colonialism and stuff like that so it's still really actual it's a really actual book and it's a really actual story. And I think we need more stuff like that, especially right now. We need to be able to learn more and to have more uh, different types of media talking about these type of subjects, you know? And mm -hmm. it, it comes with the same, it, it's like related to the same subjects that we've been talking and throughout all the Talbadun. So 
it's all about diversity and inclusion in comic books. So the more we talk about these subjects and the more we talk about and the more we research and the more there's history through comic books, the more we're going to be able to connect with a different audience and being able to bring more diversity and more inclusion in the community and the industry. And I think that's really cool and really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's also like it also enables it to be used as a, a teaching tool in schools. You know, like like I, I was talking about this before we recorded David Walker. He's coming out with a book on the Black Panther Party, and he also did a book about Frederick Douglass. You know, there's also the book March by uh, yeah. John Lewis, you know, so like there's all these books that are graphic novels that are coming out that literally could be teaching tools in schools. Like the book that you just showed by Joe Sacco could easily be taught in a, in a classroom, probably, I would imagine, you know, and I think that that is also another way that could grow readership because like people like in a classroom that don't read comic books but what if a teacher happens to read graphic novels right and they want to incorporate it into their classroom it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be superheroes and then these people that are that have this thought that oh comic books are only for kids or oh they're only superheroes will be like oh my god like it's something else and that yeah. may lead them to other other graphic novels maybe not superhero stuff but it will lead them to read other stuff because there is such a vast there's so many genres in the industry right there's so many different types of stories being told and i think that that is very cool to see because like i'm already see, i'm already seeing it with my daughter at school like that we're seeing some of these books being in classrooms as well and you know like you're talking about reporting on on real stuff like Craig Thompson's ginseng roots that's being serial serialized it comes out every other month and he's talking about ginseng farmers if you would have told me like this isn't a slight against Craig Thompson but if you would have told me two years ago right that I would be interested in reading a book or comic book about ginseng farmers I would have been like dude why the why would I read that I I have no desire to fucking read that. But because it was Craig Thompson and because I love his work, I picked it up. And it's one of the most interesting comic books I've ever read in my life. He talks about the history of ginseng, right? Going back to like, you know, um, in Asia and stuff like that. And then his youth and farming on that. And he and he like flip, he jumps back and forth between telling historical facts and then also talking about these regular people. You know, that live in this rural town and and how they, you know, how they basically their livelihood, which is farming ginseng roots. You know, yeah. it's, it's just very interesting. And I think that that is another thing that is cool is that we could end up learning stuff that we didn't even know we cared about or or that um, we had no desire to learn about. But maybe some of these creators that we learn from other stuff end up doing books like like that right or joe sacco is doing that book i think he's done a lot of stuff based on um real events i haven't read his stuff i've been meaning to but like my read pile is so big that <laughs> if it's not readily in, in in front of my face at the comic book store like it's harder for me to be like okay i'm gonna go order it I, i'm trying not to order stuff right now but you probably just made me order that book because <laughs> I, I mean I'm going I'm going to go to work today and I love Native American culture I think it's fascinating it's always been something that's interested me since I was young and Lauren too like she's a huge she's like very like it heavily influenced by Native American culture you know it's just it's it really is an exciting time to be a comic book fan is you yeah. know like especially from like where I, I like just for me, like from my perspective, like I've been able to like really grow with the industry and it's not like I'm getting, I don't get pushed out because my taste changed because when my taste change, there's new books that can go along with my taste changing. And it's, you know, it's, I just, I love comic books, man. I just, I love that shit. I love that we have so many different stories and that you so can teach and you can teach me stuff. Like, I mean, you bringing up this topic even like, Comics journalism. I never would have thought of this. And it is such a great topic to talk about because it's something that I wasn't, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't even truly aware that it kind of is a thing. You know what I mean? Like I never thought about it in that respect. I honestly didn't, I wasn't aware either. I really just by looking up, because I lately I've been reading a lot of like these type of comic books and I was like, it's so weird. I'm attracted to these books. And there's a, a French. Uh, well, a comic from Quebec 
I don't remember the title. It's not, I haven't bought it yet, but it's on my list. And it's basically a journalist who went into, he, he just went to talk to farmers and it's a comic book about um, the industry uh, of far, uh, farming, you know? So they talk about how they should and reach out to a younger uh, younger people to get more young people to the... Um, uh, the farming industry? Yeah, the farming industry. And I was like, this is so brilliant and it's so smart and something we need to talk about because it's something that we don't, like, we don't realize that it's, it's going to need to happen, you know? Like, yeah. we need to continue keep a circle of um, young people getting into old industries because it, we don't want them to die out, you know? And it's something, it's a comic book. It's really just, literally, if you take an article, but instead of putting words, it's like comic strips. Mm-hmm. And they put facts and they put stuff like that. It's really, it's really interesting. I looked at it, but I didn't buy it, but it's on my list. When I saw this comic book, I was like, why am I attracted to this style of comic books? You know, like, I realized that I was, like, really attracted to comic books who um, who had a powerful message based on through facts. And I was like, I'm sure there's something, like, I'm sure there's it exists. I'm sure there's something out there. There's a name for that style. And that's when I discovered him. And I was like, wow, I think that's really, like, connecting to me that I could actually see journalists pairing up with comic artists Mm -hmm. to deliver a comic book based on a comic journalist basically so i was like wow this is incredible and i really love the fact that you said that when a comic artist um writes something like this you can discover a subject that you didn't even know you cared about and that's the whole point of it i think it's like picking up a comic and being like why would i read a comic about farming industry like why would i read that and then realizing that it's something that you actually care about it's something that you actually need to read to be informed and to keep uh, keep being informed and just doing your own research on the subjects you know Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think even when like i was just thinking as you were talking like i think when you first said to me comics journalism i thought like i read it like Oh, talking about like people that write about comics like that. That was the first thing that came to mind. And I'm like, and, and I'm like, there's no way that's what she was talking about. And then, I, <laughs> and then I read what you wrote. And I'm like, OK, because comics journalism is like or people that write about comics is even dying. Right. Like, I think that we kind of do it on the site, but even not so much like people just talk about it and stuff. And I think that the written word still has more weight than us talking even you know what i mean like there's Mm. something about there's a there's a huge difference between reading something and hearing it and i think that that is why these kind of comic books are so important too because like people listen when people talk but it's like you you kind of you can tune somebody out the sound of their voice more than you can tune out the words that you're looking at because you're absorbing Mm -hmm. it differently right and I think it's, you know, it's, it really is like journalism itself also fascinates me. So so reading a book where I know that somebody like did such, so much research to do adds another level of intrigue for me. Cause I'm like, man, that like, that clearly took a lot of work to do this. Even if it's like a 200 page, like there's a lot of work that went into that. There's a lot of research that went into like, okay, how does this look? I need to make it accurate. Okay, I want to make sure that I that I'm doing an honest look at this person's life or or this person's um, um, world that they live in. Right. You can't get that on TV. You can, I guess. But like it's a lot like I said, a lot of differently. Yeah. Yeah. So because you can absorb it differently, it's going to have a different impact on you as opposed to seeing it or even reading it without words you know reading it with words you're going to have a bigger impact than hearing it on tv Mm -hmm. reading it with words and pictures is going to give you an even better experience and i and i I don't think it's just because we like comics that we think that i think it's just you know being able to absorb it differently will give you um a different kind of um like vision um, like a different yeah yeah i can't can't think of the word that i'm trying to think of (laughs) Or it's it's early, so <laughs> uh, I think it needs to be its own genre. Com- uh, you know, journalism in comics, I think, is what yeah. it, 
it is not comics journalism, but journalism and comics. I think it, yeah. it should be a new category. I think that it, there should be more. I think there should be more books based on true events, it, especially because, like, if you're looking at kids, right, they don't want to watch the fucking news. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they don't. And and do they all want to read books? Some will. I, I liked reading when I was a kid, like novels. But you may even get a younger audience to learn about a subject that they didn't want to like, that they don't want to watch on TV or that they don't want to read a book with no pictures, you know, and it'll be able to bridge that gap to where they'll be more interested in yeah. learning about something. And it's funny that you say that because my, I bought a, com a Quebec comic book lately and I posted it on my Instagram. It's um, a comic book. It, it's a, it's a docu documentary comics i think i've already talked about it in the channel i don't remember but it's basically um the history of suicides in quebec so they went into the archives the canadian archives and they went through all the the death certificates that were either marked as suicides or that they discovered that later that it was suicides and they put it in a comic book as to help prevent and to help talk more about the subject because that's a really heavy subject like why yeah. why it's it, the comic book talks about why a person would kill itself and why they would choose this way and why they would choose this way it's really dark but still really beautiful because it's written in a way that it's really more about prevention and about about talking it's not morbid it's really information When I brought this book home, this comic book home, my boyfriend saw it and I explained to him the, the basic like idea of this comic book and he read it and my boyfriend never reads anything. He never read any <laughs> comic books, he never read any books, but he read this one because he was really curious to see how a comic book could talk about such a heavy subject without being so heavy. And it was really interesting to see him read it. And he got this curiosity, like it helped him get this curiosity about the medium. And now like he's reading Mouse. He's literally, he picked up Mouse in my library and he's reading it. He's reading it. And I was like, this is really cool because my boyfriend, he's, he loves history. Like he loves it. He's a really like, he's an encyclop encyclopedia. And the fact that I was able to, help him connect with the medium through this type of comic books mm -hmm. is something huge for me because he would never pick up any of the comics in my bookshelves he would only be interested in historical based comic books and i really take it as a win for the comic industry to be able to reach to my boyfriend mm -hmm. with these style of comic books that's why i really want more of these because i love it and i feel like a lot of people who will never pick up a comic in their life would be able to read these type of comics like mouse i'm 100 like convinced that anybody could pick it up and love it because yeah. it's so well done and you forget that it's a comic book there's certain books that just transcend like the comic book medium because yeah. of how powerful they are. And mouse, I think is, I think if a book wins a Pulit Pulitzer, it's transcended comics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's gone. It, uh, how often do you hear of a comic book winning a Pulitzer? It's not often, you know, I think, but and, I don't know. I just saw, I just saw two, which is mouse and welcome to the new world. I'm not sure if there's more, but from what I saw, there's, If you ask me what I want more in the future for the comic industry, I want more comic books who won Pulitzer Prize. That's what I want to see. I want to see that in the future. That is crazy. So there is only two Pulitzer winning comic books. And like, there, you know, like there easily could be more. I think it's just, I mean, you and, and you're looking at the subject, right? Like the Holocaust, very heavy subject. And I mean... There's, you know, they still have, like, they call them, like, the Holocaust deniers, like, people that think it's not even real. Mm. That, that shit's crazy to me. I'm like, it's fucking fact. It's historical fact. There are, you know, there is images to accompany still, this. Up to so, last year, there was still people, I don't know if it's this year, it would, it would be like a hundred something, but there's still people who lived through it and were alive to tell their story. Like, how can you believe that it's false? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And then you have that book that, that won but with Michael Sloan the, about the series, about the, um, I mean, that again, that's got to be a heavy subject. And you said they moved to the United States 
um, when in we 2016, had... 2016, yeah, yeah, so the, during yeah. the election. Oh, great, yeah, during that fucking scumbag... Uh, and they talk power. about... Very fascinating, because there's a whole chapter where they talk about... Because there's a, there was a, this... Um, what's it called? It Like the Muslim ban that Trump... And yeah. Did? And they talk about it, they were like, if Trump win and the, he did, he do, if he wins and, and does this Muslim ban, like, what does it mean to us that we just arrived? Like, we literally arrived last week. Like, what does it mean for us? And they just got scared and they were like, I don't want to, like, I, we don't want to go back to Syria. We don't want to go back to, to war. It's dangerous and stuff like that. And it's just, it makes you think, like, wow, like, you will never realize how things can affect everyone, every little details. And it's just crazy. And I was like, this is so actual and so, so powerful, you know? Yeah, I don't really have, I can't really think of much else to say about the subject. But I do think that, like, it is a fascinating idea to think of, of journalists instead of writing articles. Like, actual journalists. They don't even have to be comic book creators, you know what I mean? But, like, to take their ideas to the comic book industry and be paired up with an artist because you know like there are artists that don't you don't have to obviously you're not going to go to like a jim lee right to draw your to draw your book but i mean like just find the right artist and there are artists out there that uh, this kind of work would appeal to them more than like the superhero genre right Mm -hmm. and I think it would it, it would be interesting to see if more journalists take that step and decide to do a graphic novel, you know, instead of just writing an article. Because that, that would be very interesting to see. I mean, we would think of the amount of different voices we would we would hear in mm-hmm. comics because they're not comic book creators, they're journalists. And I feel like journalism as a whole, it feels like it's – I don't want to say it's dying, but – I feel like it's not as appreciated as it was um, no, like it's 50 not years ago. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not talking about journalism like uh, on the news. I'm talking about journalism like writing. People that are putting pen to paper or writing and or typing up an article. It's just not – it's not what it once was. And I, I hope we see more. I, it would be cool to see more graphic novels winning Pulitzers. Yeah. I mean, that's my whole goal. Like, I want – like – in the next years, I want to see more comic books winning Pulitzer Prize. I just, I want to see it because I love it and it's fascinating. And I think it will be awesome for both industries, both journalism and both comic book industries. It will be just the best way to have these two really amazing industry like merge together to give a new life and a new, like a new beginning to these two big industries and to really reach a different audience and being able to bring more people to the party you know and i think that this video is just um really look like, like a love letter to the genre you know like like yeah. a love video to how amazing it is to see these really great comic books winning prices outside of their industry winning right. stuff that it's not like common to win stuff that they shouldn't have win because it wasn't related to the industry, you know? And I just find it really amazing. And I just, today I just wanted to like talk about my love for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing the idea to do this video because it's definitely something that would not have been on my mind. And I'm glad we're able to share it with, um, with everybody that's watching or or listening, I'll 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 throw this up on the audio as well. Um, I'm gonna start doing that with these episodes so that it the people that don't watch it on YouTube can still like listen to it on iTunes and stuff like that. Because I think that what we talk about, I want as many people to hear it as possible. Because I think this t- topics that we talk about on this specific series are topics that aren't always talked about. And this one, I definitely have never read an article about. I've never seen a video about and. I think that that's what's cool about uh, our chats is that you bring fresh ideas to me and we both have different opinions, but we also share a lot of the same opinions. And um, I'm excited for people to hear this. If you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Comic Lounge. You can follow Jen at Life of a Geeky Mind on Instagram. Make sure you throw your comments or suggestions down below or email us, thecomiclouncepod at gmail.com. And make sure you subscribe. 
on the YouTube channel, Podbean, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you're listening to us, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified every time a new episode goes up. And on that note, we're out.